Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well and welcome to this, the, I suppose, third video in this series of what we are doing, but the first one where we're going to be jumping into an affiliation. Now, what are these videos? Well, the idea of these videos is you've gone out there and you've bought the core box or you may be looking to jump into another affiliation. Each video, we're going to be breaking down an affiliation and putting together two rosters for them. One that is a budget roster and one where money is no object so we can be frivolous and buy a pack that costs a hundred dollars for purely a single tactics card and joining me on this journey is the one the only Quinn Duggan. Quinn how you doing? I'm all right. <laughs> We're quite excited about this one aren't we? Um, anything that involves we us spending three hours on a discord call deciding what colour yellow we should include <laughs> in the in the battle cards, I think, uh, sort of is well, testament I mean, to, 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 to what we put into they it. start with you sending me something and then me ripping it apart. <laughs> We've had a few iterations, haven't we? <laughs> um, but Quinn, we're going to start, we're going to start at the very beginning, right? So we're going to be starting this video, we're going to be covering off the Avengers. Uh, and a team that you've had sort of a, a newfound love for, haven't you, over the last uh, last couple of months? Well, yeah, like, with, with, like, sort of the errata to all of the sort of older cards and, like, the new life it's breathed into the game, I have gone back to Avengers. I did play Avengers before. I think everyone's played Avengers at some point, pretty much, because yeah. they're Avengers. They're, like, the start of action, right? But, yeah, like, I've been really enjoying them. Like, yeah, Steve, Steve's in a good place. I like Steve. Yep, Steve is in a really good place. So let's uh, let's jump over to our battle card. Now, a video that you probably need to go and watch because we won't be covering it in really any detail in this video is our three pillars video. I'll put a link up here so you can go and check that out. But you'll notice that we've got our little playstyle focus there with three symbols on attrition, support, and control. So we do a video where we break that down and explain exactly what that is. Uh, but Quinn, let's jump straight into this then. And let's start then with who we've taken from the core box. And we've actually decided to take all four of them with us, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, three of the four have gotten buffs in the recent errata's, and yes. the other one is, you know, Black Widow. She, she's good for a two threat. She does what she needs to. Two two threat affiliated is uh, is never a bad thing. Um, so then, complementing that, we've taken CP thirteen, and that is the Vision and uh, Winter Soldier pack. And we've taken a couple of things from there. Not only the two characters, which we'll get into. We've then got CP thirty eight, which is the Sam Wilson and War Machine pack. Now you're going to see a trend in these um, sort of rosters that we put together, wherever there is the option to bring in a second leader that we think is worthwhile bringing in, you're probably going to see that we choose that character pack to bring that leader in as well. So we brought both of those characters with us and then rounding it out, um, I think one of the best uh, newest additions to the Avengers roster in, in some time, Quinn, uh, CP49 bringing in Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Um, and that rounds off our 10 characters, doesn't it, in terms of yep. what we've got there. Um, so the say about the characters, I think it's, an, it's a, a nice enough spread, but as we'll go into the pros and cons, it's lacking a little bit at the sort of upper end of the threat level, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Crisis cards. Now, because we didn't take any character packs that contained any additional crisis cards, uh, we are left with the six uh, from the core box. So that is Struggle for the Cube, Scrolls, Spider Infected, Deadly Meteors, Infinity Formula, and then Riot Spark. So the six that we get in the core box. Um, but 17 threat is is quite nice for, for this affiliation, Quinn. They don't yep. really care too much about the the sort of shape of the map. I suppose mm -hmm. they're more concerned with the type of map that they are on in, in terms of like, is it a flip objective or not? That sort of thing rather yeah, than... I mean you also have to factor in that, um, you know, this is a beginner roster. So, yes. you know, you, you could see that having 17 as your set, th set threat for every one of your crises as a benefit because it's one less thing that you have to learn and it's something that you can adapt to later on. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then lastly, then going into the tactics cards. Now we were fortunate because we did get some uh, some more tactics cards from the various packs. Uh, we're only taking one affiliated tactics card, and that is Avengers Assemble. Uh, we've then got Ricochet Blast. We've got Birds of Prey, Heroes for Hire, Till the End of the Line, and the Air Force, which are all character-specific cards. We've then taken two restricted cards in Brace for Impact and then Field Dressing. And then we've got Sacrifice and Disarm for our two unaffiliated sort of anyone can use tactics cards. And I would say you've got a little bit of flexibility in there, Quinn, haven't you? You know, if you yeah. if you had a particular favourite card, you know, you you might want to take a patch up rather than a brace for impact, for example. Um, or, you know, there may be something else that's unaffiliated you want to take over Sacrifice and Disarm. But, but they're the ones that we've picked. And I think overall, Quinn, play style focus for this list very much sits sort of equally between that attrition and control piece, yeah, doesn't it? Probably got, slightly more on the control. Probably, yeah. Like, you've got a lot of displacement in the form of, like, both caps, the, like, plenty of character throws, pushes on certain attack triggers, uh, and then, obviously, attrition-wise, you've got a lot of tanky boys in this list. I mean, yeah. you've got three characters that do innate damage reduction, yeah, you've got three characters that do innate damage reduction. We've got two characters that can do a straight-up bodyguard. Plus, then, you can add uh, Iron Fist in the mix once you add in the Heroes for Higher Tactics cards, which, yep. you know, when you're building your squad out, if you've got one of those in your roster, that card probably goes in there 99% of the time. You need a really good reason to not take Heroes for Higher. Um, but I love, then, the fact that we've got that adaptability, Quinn, to just be able to go, okay, I'm going to go really wide, right? I'm going to yeah. take Sam Wilson as my leader and I get all of that extra movement and all of that control over the board, that out of activation movement, which as we know is so, so powerful in the game. Let's have a look at some of the pros then. Um, so we've already spoke about the fact that we've brought two leaders, which is, yep. is really, really nice. It really um, gives it a lot more adaptability in terms of, you know, especially if you're coming up you know, we've got 17 in our roster uh, across the board, but there's no guarantee that that's the threat level that we're going to yeah. be playing. Um, we've got an affiliated two threat, which we mentioned already. Um, don't underestimate that in any roster. Having an affiliated two threat is really, really good. It, it really does, like, give you a lot of ease when it comes to roster cons uh, squad construction. Uh, less so with this list, because everyone's affiliated or can be pseudo affiliated. But, I mean, just going back to the two leaders, um, it also gives you a lot more play space to explore if this yeah. is your first roster. Like, you're, you're, you're going to have, like, an extended sort of period of time where you can check out what you're doing with each character rather than ha getting bored and immediately going and buying another pack to sort of, you know, re reinvigorate your interest. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you've got the core box. And so the one thing I would also say as well, Quinn, is we've decided to put Bucky in there. I would say... Of all of the characters that are in there, Bucky is probably the most interchangeable. Yeah. Um, very easily put in there a Peter Parker if you wanted. Very easily put in a Zemo if you wanted in there. You know, I don't mind, um, you know, a, a, a Doc Ock or somebody like that getting a cheaper throw. Yeah. So, you know, you've already got the core box, so you can very, very easily swap out, you know, a Bucky, a War Machine. You know, you don't necessarily need to take both Luke Cage and Iron Fist. So, so whilst this is the roster that we've put together, I'd very much see this, Quinn, as a template that you can swap some of these characters out. There are obviously yeah. some, you know, I would say... You know, the, 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 the characters that you definitely want to keep are the four Avengers from the box um, and uh, and Sam. Like, you know, they're, they're the ones that are kind of the core of this. Um, yeah, you but, can sort of th think of this roster as sort of the foundations upon which you can build, like, your sort of MCP journey on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Threat Curve, Quinn, as we already mentioned, you know, it's heavily in that sort of mid. So we've got one, two. Uh, we've got, I think, six three threats, which really does help with Sam's roster um, because, you know, we can go much, much wider with, with Sam. Uh, we've got a few four threats, but then that's it. And that's one of the one of the cons, really, isn't it, is that it is lacking high threat characters. And it's not to say that you can't be successful without high threat characters, but... Yeah. It's often quite nice, isn't it, to have a high threat option in there. I mean, big, big smashy characters are fun. 
Like, this yeah, is a well-known thing. Yeah, they are fun. They're definitely fun, but they do bring something else to the game as well, don't they, in terms of play style. Um, yeah. One other thing that's worth mentioning with this one, Quinn, on the cons is the lack of mystic attacks. Uh, this is the core box. Um, now, we could have picked a character that had mystic attacks in there. You know, we could have potentially gone with a scarlet witch and a quicksilver pack and put mystic yep. attacks in there that's something you could absolutely go for but i think as this is you know i see this quinn as really being a as i say a first step out of the core box we wanted to keep that difficulty down as well didn't we in terms of play style and, and, and how hard it was um to play the game and the mechanics that you need to learn to be able to play it's so that's something else we've we've taken into into consideration we mentioned the packs that we've used we've got cp1 cp13 cp38 and cp49 so coming in quinn at a grand total of 219 dollars and 80 cents if you did buy them at full uh rrp but nobody buys nobody buys them at no. uh, rrp I'd like to thank the sponsor of the channel, Elysium Wargames. You can find them at ElysiumWarGames.com, link down in the description below, where you can find all of your favourite hobbying products, including, of course, Marvel Crisis Protocol at fantastic discounts. They also run a whole bunch of events, most of which, if they're Marvel Crisis Protocol related, you can expect to see me at as well. So, Queen, overall then, let's have a quick look at sort of four final things. So, first of all, the cost. We've just mentioned it's $219. Now, somebody coming into the game who maybe hasn't bought anything yet, I'm not saying that this is an insignificant amount of money, but what we're comparing this to are other rosters in the game. Really, this is going to be one of the most cost-effective rosters in the game completely, Quinn, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, effectively, you're using as many parts of the pack you bought as you can. Because, yeah. you know... You're, you're, you're using all, all six of the characters you've got from those three packs. Uh, you're also using, like, a lot of the tactics cards that are included. Uh, you know, you're bringing field dressing from the Vision and Winter Soldier pack and all of the character-related ones as well. Yeah, yeah. So we've given it a $1 out of 5 in terms of cost. Um, onto the difficulty, Quinn, we mentioned that we were really wanted to be really cautious with this list, didn't we? And we wanted to make it a, not a Fisher-Price, my first uh, MCP roster, but kind of that first step into learning some of the more um, enhanced mechanics. And I like the fact that we've got Steve's leadership in there that you can play with at first that is... You know, it's it's quite basic in terms of what mm -hmm. it does, right? It's it's gu always guaranteed. It's not you know, it's not relying on other triggers for it to happen. You know, you do something, you spend one less power on it, uh, which is really nice and easy. Um, you know, some of the more complex things we've got in there, and maybe things like the heroes for hire until the end of the line. But again, you can introduce them into the into the roster. So yeah, it I've, can always be a gradual process. Yeah, so I've given this a one skull out of five for difficulty, which I think is fair. Yeah, and then on to adaptability, and I think this list offers a huge amount of adaptability, Quinn. Not only in the roster in itself, but also as I mentioned, the fact that the affiliation as a whole, you can swap some of these characters out for other characters if you wish. Um, so I've given it five wilds out of five for for adaptability. Um, so that then brings us to the overall roster score. Now the way that we've worked these out is we've worked some key components out. So what it scores in attrition, you know, what it scores in control, support, how cost effective it is, how difficult it is, you know, how adaptable it is. And then there's some math at the back end that works it out to a score out of 10. Um, and we've given this roster a 6.3 out of 10. So I'm going to say, Quinn, that, you know, turning up to your, you know, local gaming store on a Friday night, playing some casual games with your friends, this is a great roster to start that journey. But also, you know, if you wanted to join a, a local league or go to an event, you're going to turn up. You're not going to have your rear end handed to you every single game because this list is going to be competitive enough that you're going to enjoy those games that you're going to have. Are you going yeah, to turn you're up? You're going to have a fighting chance, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not. You're probably not going to rock up and go four and zero at your first tournament against, uh, you know, a Hund Black Order or Web Warriors list or anything like that. But you're going to turn up. You're going to be able to have some really good fun with it, uh, and it's going to be a really nice entry point into your Avengers journey in Marvel Crisis Protocol. 
So Quinn, as we mentioned, we are going to put two rosters together and indeed two battle cards together for each of those affiliations. So we've just covered off the budget one for the Avengers and it's fair to say, Quinn, that this one that um, primarily you've put together um, is most definitely not, not a budget roster. But let's start again with the actual uh, roster itself and then we're going to some of the more details of it. So the good news is, guys, that we have retained four characters from the original core box still really showing that value in the core box so captain america steve rogers uh black widow iron man and captain marvel are all still in there we then have sam wilson who was from the initial list we wanted to keep that secondary leader and then the last character from the first list that we just put together is luke cage and i think luke brings a really nice three threat bodyguard option quinn uh, when we're not playing steve that's particularly yeah. in a in a sam list um but he also brings that amazing heroes for higher card as well which is just really really good so you mentioned that we didn't have any big hitters in our previous list quinn and you have most definitely made up for it in this one um so we brought along hulk from cp04 we've bought brought his cousin along she hulk from cp39 <laughs> we've got uh, uh dr dr stephen vincent vincent strange cp23 and then rounding that out is the juggernaut from cp56 um so quinn we already know a little bit why we've got some of the other characters but i want to pick out first of all is the sort of combination if you like of hulk and she hulk um, so why both of the Hulks? I like to smash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a couple reasons. I mean, one is if you have like a singular big threat, uh, what ends up happening is your opponent can sort of focus on that entirely and it becomes a lot easier to break down. Whereas if you've got two big threats, like Hulk and She-Hulk together, like your opponent either has to split their fire or like, you know, they have to focus down one, then they have to focus down the other whilst they've already expended the resources required to kill the first one. I want to talk about Juggernaut, because people may think that's a strange addition to the to the roster, especially when there are so many other affiliated characters that we that we could bring. So so why the Juggernaut? Uh so one, he's the Juggernaut. <laughs> uh, two, um so you, this is skipping ahead a little bit into Crisis Selection, uh, but we've got Mystic Wakanda and Herb. And with Wakanda and Herb specifically, uh, it, it's one of those crises where if you have a plan for it, it can be very beneficial, right? It can be a very strong crisis. Uh, Juggernaut plays into that because through various shenanigans and com uh, combinations, you can get him to the Herb round one without him having moved. He then picks up the Herb and moves, generates two power, uh, and then because he's under Steve's leadership, he can then do his unstoppable force for two that you just gained, punch someone for nine dice, and then next turn sort of do the same again and try and get to uh, the Herb Alter. Yeah, and, and, you know, he's already got great defensive stats himself, hasn't he? So having that Herb isn't too much of a problem for him. No. He's going to become a focus, but he's probably going to have some helping hands in the form of, you know, maybe a, a Mr you know, Captain Steve Rogers or indeed uh, a Mr. Uh, Power Man himself, Luke Cage. So if he is, you know, you know, if he is looking like, oh, there's some big hitters that could go into him here, they can just take that fall for him. Um, yeah. So on to the crisis selection then. And we've had um a complete change out uh we've none of the uh, none of the original core box ones are in there so as you mentioned we've got uh mystic wakandan herbs we've got research station we've got alien ship we've got gamma wave demons downtown and then terrigen cloud so you'll notice a couple of low threats so two 15 threats um a 16 threat but then three big threat cards that we can play there um if we want to go and as you say quinn smash uh, i think is the uh, is the scientific term i think for for what we do let's have a quick um, uh, look at the tactics card so we've got avengers assemble and ricochet blast so they're the two i think that we carried over a uh, brace for impact as well was carried over and heroes yeah, for hire awesome. even as well yep. yeah um gamma launch we have got in there as well um queen i'm gathering gamma launch plays somewhere into the uh, wakanda and her piece yeah, uh, so typically what you do is you have Hulk and Juggernaut stand next to each other, Hulk activates, 
spends all of his power, launches Juggernaut range 5 forward. He then ends up standing next to the herb, and then on Juggernaut's go, picks it up, moves, does a push, punches someone in the face. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we have then got Heroes Vile, which we've already, you know, we, everyone knows what that does. Agents of Smash, which is really nice. It's the only way to throw a size 5 uh, piece of terrain. Um, do you know who I am? Uh, super super good card we then got med pack as our second restricted uh indomitable and follow me um follow me for some really really good one two combos from hulk and she hulk which uh yeah can be you know the best way of stopping your opponents from focusing down and, and taking down one of your big hitters is have them both activate and just don't let them um and obviously <laughs> Power generation now on Hulk means it is significantly easier for him to be able to trigger that follow me as well, Quinn, doesn't it? Yeah. So the curve then looks very, very different in this list. Uh, we've got a single two threat. We've got three, three threats, but then we've got two each, four, five, and six threat characters. So Quinn, play style focus then now the budget list was very much split almost evenly with control just taking the edge between control and attrition and very very little on support but we've seen that attrition has moved up significantly um control is um it's sort of still at the sort of halfway mark but also we've got a significant um uh, significantly more support in there so i want to cover off that support piece um in Dr. Stephen Strange and what he's bringing that's so important. Um, and for those that caught it, you may have seen us do a little bit of a breakdown of uh, of Dr. Stephen Strange, but why is he in this list and, and what's he bringing from a support perspective? Uh, so the reason he's in this list is for when you're playing 15 and it's not herbs, right? So you're playing Gamma because that's the only other way you can play 15 uh, without, be without it being herbs. But um, sort of the thing he brings is sort of the step down of the double hole, right? So you go from having She-Hulk to having Strange because you're a threat down, and in effect that brings in a lot of control from, you know, uh, Strange's ability to push people with his attacks. Uh, also brings uh, defensive buffs, uh, you know, giving Hulk and Cap more dice is always good, yep. especially when Cap's on his injured side and he's counting blanks because more dice have more value in that case. Uh, then you've also got the healing ability, uh, Oshka's Refuge. Uh, yes. Healing 3 is a very big deal in this game, considering almost all he healing abilities are restricted because they typically come in the form of tactics cards. Strange being able to do that every turn for 2 under Steve is very good. The, the other thing I want to say as well is, and that I really like, Steve's leadership is the first time a character uses a superpower this turn. So if Strange goes first, activates first, for you know, you activate him first, and he uses some superpowers, his first superpower where he, you know, he gets to, um, uh, you know, heal a character up, for example. Could yep. be himself, could be somebody else. He's going to get that discount, right? He then takes his turn, does what he's going to do, and then somebody else activates, you know, your opponent activates, and it's your turn again. He gets that bonus again from his reactive superpowers. Yeah. So he's Which getting is, that discount multiple times a game, isn't it? One of the strengths of Steve's leadership is when you can combine it with reactive superpowers, you just get so much more value from it because you're just using it more and more. Yeah, yeah. Um, the attrition side, I mean, look, we've got two Hulks, a Juggernaut and a Strange. Um, the attrition is high. Um, they, they smash things up real good. But a lot of that attrition comes from those throws as well, Quinn, doesn't it? Yep. Um, we've got access and, and into the pros for a second more. We've got access to uh, four plus throws, which is is huge, absolutely huge. Um, they're now a, um, what's the word, Quinn? They're now a, a, a scarcer commodity. You know, they're being they're able to, premium, right? Yeah, being able to push and throw 
four plus is now a scarcer commodity than what it was. Yeah, and just to clarify, when we say four plus, we mean characters that are size four, size or... four, and it's four and higher, um, and indeed terrain as well, because you know not everyone can throw throw a size size four terrain. Um, and then the control comes from everything else that we've got as well, because obviously push is going to control. Steve's got control. <laughs> Both Steves have control. Uh, Sam brings a huge amount of control as well. They're the pros really as well in their cons. Whilst it's really nice we've got high threat characters, there is also a reliance on high threat characters. You know, we've gone yep. from having, I think, six three threats, which gives you a lot more adaptability. Uh, so we've got a reliance on high threat, threat characters. Uh, and I'm going to say, Quinn, that the ceiling for this roster is very high, but the floor is very low. The difficulty levels are higher. Therefore, you need to know more about what each character can do. There are more connecting parts, aren't they, uh, in terms of reactive abilities and reactive tactics cards and those sorts of things, which just, just makes that learning curve that little bit harder. Um, so if you get it wrong, whereas the first roster is quite forgiving, getting it wrong in this one, you know, playing Follow Me at the wrong time, playing Heroes for Hire at the wrong time, um, you know, forgetting to do a Gamma launch with Juggernaut, yeah. well, there you go, that card is now completely useless almost. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit more punishing, isn't it, in terms of in terms of what it uh, what it offers. Um, yeah. Packs used, guys, see them on the screen now. I'm not going to reel them off because there are a lot. Um, we were very efficient in the last in the last roster less so in this um i don't think we've taken too many i can see at least one tactics card that is just we bought a box for the tactics card in in indomitable uh i uh, don't there's think also a med pack as well a med pack is another one yes we bought you know we've spent we spent 80 dollars on two tactics cards um but grand total of $634.25. So as we like to do, we'll move into the last four parts then. So cost, you just heard then 634.25. Quinn, I've given it a three and a half dollars out of five. And the reason why is we're still using a huge part of the core box itself. And I think with the Avengers list, that's something we have to take into consideration. There are going to be other rosters we put together that maybe use no components of the core box at all. Yeah, I, um, I think there's also, like, with regard to cost, there's a factor of how easy it is to, like, substitute out certain cards that you might just buy a, a an entire pack for a single card. If yeah. Then, you know, you have to consider the fact that, you know, being able to easily swap that out for something else that's, you know, already in another one of the packs that you've got you know that does it, it doesn't decrease the cost but it does affect how much the cost influences it's, the list it's the value and, and and the adaptability as well isn't it and, we'll, and yeah. we'll, we'll 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 come on to that one so difficulty as i mentioned this is there's a learning curve quinn isn't there for this one um to be able to understand how to play it correctly um so i've given it three and a half skulls out of five i feel like that's a fair you know it's by no means the most complex list in the game uh, but there's a lot more uh, mechanics that you need to learn to be able to play this one and then adaptability i still think when this is a very very adaptable list uh, yeah. We've got a really nice spread of threat. We've got two leaders, which is always going to be really, really nice. And as you mentioned, um, some of these cards, you know, can be swapped out. You know, if you didn't want to spend the $55 on Juggernaut, you could swap him out quite easily and then probably swap out Wakandan Herb as well, you know, for, yeah. for you know, a generic 17, you know, 17 threat and, and put... Um, I don't know, put, put Iron Fist back in, right? Yeah. So you've got another three threats. So again, really, really adaptable. Um, so Quinn, roster score, I'm giving this one an 8.1 out of 10. Um, significantly higher than the first roster. This is a honed roster, isn't it? Once you've, once you've put some reps in with this, you're going to be able to turn up to an event as Quinn has already done multiple times and compete with the very best players running the very best rosters there um so yeah anything anything else to add quinn about about this one uh have fun smashing <laughs> it's and do you know what it, it's a real fun list 
it's a really, really fun list. But guys, we are going to leave it there for this affiliation breakdown. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. Um, be sure to check out the Cabal one, which is the sort of sister one to this that's been released at exactly the same time. You'll see a, a card towards the end of the video for that one. If you did find this video useful in any way, shape or form, all I ask is that you hit that like button, guys. It really, really does help out the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel even further, we do have a Patreon with details down in the link below and we also have our merch store as well we have a discord server that you can join it's completely free uh, there's over sort of 300 people on there now and that is where you'll be able to find this battle card completely free of charge there is a dedicated channel where i post all of these battle cards after the videos have gone up so you'll be able to take this actually look at it in more detail because i appreciate that you might not always be able to see the battle card in perfect detail especially if you're watching this back on a you know iphone or mobile device or something like that as always guys it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time bye for now see you